Our God is not distant or indifferent. His caring embrace extends to every challenge and joy we encounter. In the tapestry of our lives, He intimately knows each thread, each color, and every intricate pattern. He encourages you to persevere with a heart filled with love, urging you to never surrender. Imagine this journey of life as a grand play unfolding on a stage. God, the playwright, is orchestrating a beautiful story for you. He wants you to understand that behind the scenes, there's a character. One God has ordained for you, praying fervently for the moment your paths will cross, envisioning a shared destiny. You have to believe this. It's the truth. Dear friend, let this assurance resonate within you. The special someone destined for you will not merely accept you, but cherish you for exactly who you are. Picture this person as a tailor-made soulmate, intricately woven into the fabric of your life by the divine hands of providence. Now take a moment to reflect on past relationships as chapters that didn't align with the plot God had penned for your love story. Understand that they were not the ones foreseen for you by the Creator. Yes, at the time, it felt genuine, but the truth is that God had something else in mind for you, and that's not where He is taking you now. So believe, dear one, that you are not wandering through loveless chapters. The person divinely designed for you will arrive at the right page, recognizing qualities that past characters failed to see. Picture this encounter as a moment when two puzzle pieces finally fit snugly together, completing a beautiful picture. The person God has crafted for you will not only see your worth, but will love you in ways beyond your imagination. So don't lose heart. Hold on to the belief that the one tailor made for you by the Creator will step into your story at just the right moment. Trust that the chapters yet to unfold will reveal a love more profound and enduring than you can fathom. When this person comes, you will identify them immediately because they will make you feel special and unique. After all, that is the way God created you. Dear friend, I understand that the journey of love can sometimes feel like an uphill climb, and the destination appears elusive. However, I want to reassure you that giving up is not the path destined for you. Instead, envision a future adorned with a great and fulfilling relationship, one that blossoms into a marriage, weaving the tapestry of a beautiful home. Yet it's crucial to recognize that this love story unfolds seamlessly when aligned with the divine plan and purpose of God. When we stray from God's path, our ordained partner might cross our lives, but recognition will elude both of us like ships passing in the night. Consider this. In moments of doubt or when love seems like a distant dream, the ordained one might already be present with us. However, by not acknowledging the possibility of love or by surrendering to despair, we risk missing the subtle cues that God orchestrates. Friends, love in its divine form requires faith and a steadfast belief in the Almighty's perfect timing. So why surrender to despair when you can cling to the unwavering hope that God the author of true love will send forth the one intricately ordained for you. I understand that the wait might be arduous, making you question if love will ever find its way to your doorstep. The fear of ending up alone might cast shadows on your faith. Yet I urge you not to falter, for God is not oblivious to your longing heart. He perceives the ache within, and in those moments of doubt, He encourages you to draw closer to Him. Amidst the uncertainty, God beckons you to redirect your focus to trust wholly in His guidance. Waiting on God may seem like an interminable journey, and the silence might echo with loneliness, but in this season of waiting, your faith is not in vain. It's a testament to your trust in a God who cares deeply about your desires. So, hold on to the belief that He knows the depths of your heart will answer your prayers in His perfect time. Let patience be the melody that accompanies your journey. As you wait on God, remember that He is working behind the scenes, orchestrating a love story that surpasses your imagination. The waiting, though challenging, is an integral part of the narrative, a preparation for a love that will surpass your wildest dreams. Cling to the flame of hope, for in due time, the one divinely chosen to share your journey will step into the spotlight of your life. 
Ecclesiastes 3.11 reminds us that God makes everything beautiful in His time. He has intricately woven eternity into our hearts. And though we may not comprehend the entirety of His divine plan, we can trust that every moment is part of a larger masterpiece. Embrace the truth embedded in Scripture, for it echoes the assurance that God's timing is impeccable. He will orchestrate the encounters, the meetings, and the union of your destined spouse. Your task is to wait patiently, not succumbing to fear. Fear, dear one, is a gateway that the devil seeks to exploit. God desires your faith to be robust, a shield against the whispers of doubt. He doesn't want fear to find a dwelling place in your heart. Instead, he urges you to banish worry and remain steadfast in your belief in love's divine timing. I understand the silent battle within, where the shame of perceived solitude seeks to overshadow your hope. The world may cast its judgments on you because you have not been able to find someone special in your life. But remember the profound truth declared in 1 Peter 2.9. You are a chosen, royal, and holy creation of God. Embrace your uniqueness, for in His eyes you are excellent. The enemy may attempt to sow seeds of doubt, suggesting that time has slipped away and you've waited too long. Disregard these whispers, for God's timing is not bound by earthly constraints. His plan unfolds perfectly, and the special someone meant for you is on the horizon, earnestly seeking the beauty that others have failed to recognize. When they come, your new story will overshadow the season of waiting and you'll leave it all behind you. Take solace, dear one, in the knowledge that God is not oblivious to your journey. He is aware of the challenges, the inner turmoil, and the longing of your heart. Your trust in Him is a testament to your faith. The waiting may seem prolonged, but rest assured that it's a preparation for a love story that will defy expectations. This is why you need to have a close relationship with the Holy Spirit to help you understand God's Word and God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you what is true and what is false, so that you don't get fooled or hurt. We cannot do without God's grace to help us while we wait for the right person. No one gets it right by themselves. You may feel impatient or lonely, but God is telling you to wait because He knows what is best for you. He is the best matchmaker, and He has someone special for you. He is working behind the scenes to make you meet that person at the right time and place. Don't depend on your own wisdom. Trust God and let Him do what He has promised to do. He is a wonderful Father, and He cares about your needs and desires. He can heal your pain from a past broken relationship. He can make you better and happier. He wants to do this, and He will not give you someone who will play with your heart or leave you shattered. He knows everything. So let Him be in charge of your life. Don't give up on love. Trust Him as He leads you to your soulmate. Consider Isaac and Rebecca. Their love story is a blueprint for how God can weave magic into our relationships if we just trust Him. Isaac and Rebecca didn't just randomly bump into each other or swipe right on some ancient dating app. Nope, it was all God's doing. He used Abraham's servant as a sort of love detective to find the perfect match for Isaac. And guess what? It led him straight to Rebecca who turned out to be kind, generous, and super faithful. Now, here's the cool part. God even gave Rebecca a sign and a choice. And she said yes to the journey with the servant, and of course, yes to marrying Isaac. When they finally met, they became a power couple, living happily until the end of their days. Their story is like a love manual from God to us. It teaches us to trust God, be devoted, and seek His guidance in our relationships. They didn't settle for less, and they made sure God was the captain of their relationship without compromises. Friends, God, being the ultimate guide, knows everything about us, our past, present, our future, the strengths, and weaknesses. But still, He's got our backs and He loves us more than we can wrap our heads around. Have you ever been let down or confused in a relationship? We've all been there. That's when you must invite God into the mix. He's the ultimate healer, the truth seeker, the obstacle overcomer. He can mend your broken heart, clear your mind, and guide you through the maze of emotions. Now let's talk about you. 
Your heavenly father has got a fantastic plan for your life. He wants you to be happy with a partner who's not just good, but godly. Someone who loves, respects, and supports you. But here's the thing, patience is the key. You've got to wait on God's timing and follow his way. Stay humble, prayerful, obedient, and surround yourself with the right people who are truly behind you. A faith family who will share your highs and lows, and not those who will pull you down. But take note, as you wait for the right one, don't let desperation knock on your door, leading you to settle for just about anyone, especially not someone who doesn't share your love for God or seek after what's right. The Bible is crystal clear about this in 2 Corinthians 6.14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? This verse tells us that being in a relationship with fellow believers strengthens your faith in God. God wants your focus on Him and maintaining your relationship with Him. Being with an unbeliever won't help you achieve that in any way. On the contrary, it may lead you astray. However, in God, you'll discover a peace that's beyond understanding. It's a tranquil confidence that God has everything under control. Our God is faithful, loving, and caring. He has everything in His hands. Just let Him take the wheel, and you'll see Him work wonders in your relationships. Stay blessed on this journey, and remember, God's got your back, and He will bring the right one your way sooner than you expected. Understanding God and His will for our lives, especially in choosing a life partner, is a unique journey we all experience. It's about knowing His guidance and the purpose He has for our relationships. Truly understanding God's will for your relationship goes beyond your intuition. It involves the Holy Spirit confirming God's purpose for you, taking you by the hand, and leading you into it one step at a time. You need to understand that being led by the Holy Spirit is a precious gift for every believer. We cannot do anything good without Him. Just as Jesus told His disciples in John 16, 13, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. Take note of those words. He will guide you into all truth. This means that if you're in the truth, or if you want to end up in the truth, then the Holy Spirit must lead you. If He doesn't lead you, you cannot end up in your true destiny. Abraham serves as a perfect example of someone who knew and obeyed God. His unconditional relationship with God allowed him to understand and obey God, including when choosing a spouse for his son Isaac. Friends, there is no confusion with God. If he's telling you yes, why not obey him? Abraham's faith and obedience to God's timing are recorded as an example for us. Galatians 3.6 mentions that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. His deep relationship with God helped him mature in faith and trust in God's perfect timing. As your relationship with God grows stronger, you'll recognize his voice more clearly without struggling to understand it. This deeper connection with God allows you to discern His will with greater ease, which is a crucial aspect of spiritual growth. Now, understanding God's will regarding your spouse is significant. Are you receiving a green light from God? By seeking clarity on whether you're receiving a green light from God, you're acknowledging the importance of aligning your life choices with His plan for you. You may have asked yourself these questions feeling weighed down and thinking that God wasn't hearing your prayers. In this video, I'll share some signs with you you may have overlooked, indicating that God is saying yes to your spouse. Please, watch until the end and feel free to like and share this video with friends and family who may need to hear this message. Dear Saint, God communicates with each of us in unique ways, tailored to our individual relationships with Him. It's possible that God's been speaking to you about your future spouse, perhaps in ways you haven't recognized. When it comes to discerning God's voice, there are specific signs to be attentive to, and you may already be experiencing these signs without fully realizing their significance. 
Thus, I believe that you watching this video is not a coincidence. God wants you to understand what he's saying so that you can enter into the reality he's prepared for you. Now, here are the signs that can indicate that God is saying yes concerning that person whom he's chosen to be your spouse. Number one, peace and inner confirmation. Feeling a deep sense of peace and calmness can be a powerful indicator of God's yes. This inner tranquility serves as an assurance that God is guiding you towards this relationship and potential marriage. While you might have expected a revelation through a dream or vision, God communicates in many ways. The peace you experience signifies His hand in the relationship. Have you ever noticed that even on a challenging day, the presence of this person brings you a sense of peace that transcends the difficulties? This is God's way of affirming that this person is right for you. Jeremiah 29.11 reassures us that God's thoughts are of peace and not of harm, offering us hope and a promising future. Recognizing this sign and understanding its significance can provide valuable insights into God's guidance for your relationship and other areas of your life. It's a beautiful journey of faith and trust, allowing God to lead you towards a fulfilling and purposeful union, filling your heart with peace. Number two, support for spiritual growth and values. When your potential spouse supports your spiritual growth and values, it can be a strong indication of God's affirmation in that relationship. This often goes unnoticed, but it's a significant sign of God's hand in the relationship. Do not let the emotional excitement turn your gaze from what truly matters when saying yes to the person God's bringing into your life. Above all else, your spiritual growth is paramount. Therefore, you must seek out someone who helps you grow an alignment of values and mutual encouragement to serve God are clear indicators of His guidance. Amos 3.3 emphasizes the importance of agreement and walking together, highlighting the harmony between spiritual beliefs and values. The presence of a deepening spiritual connection and shared motivation towards God's will is a testament to God's approval of the relationship. It signifies His desire for both individuals to uplift and support each other in their journey of faith. Remember that the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2.4, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This verse underlines God's desire for all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, emphasizing the significance of a relationship that strengthens spiritual growth this means He would never bring someone into your life who would push you away from Him. This is a vital sign to look out for, my dear friend. When someone comes into your life and supports your spiritual development, your prayer life, and your ministry, then it might be a sign God is saying yes to a relationship with them. Push your fears aside and trust God to guide you. Number three, healthy boundaries and respect. Another vital sign of God's affirmation in a relationship is the absence of a solely physical focus. When the focus remains on building a strong, respectful connection without undue emphasis on physical intimacy, it reflects a reverence for the sanctity of marriage and a commitment to honor God's design for relationships. In a world that thrives on physical pleasures and immorality, this is a very important virtue to look out for in the person God sends your way. If they're keen on helping you maintain healthy boundaries and doesn't disrespect you or your body, even with your consent, then it's a good sign to go forward in a relationship. We must strive to honor God, no matter how we feel or where we are. Hebrews 13.4 says, Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. This verse emphasizes the honor and purity of marriage, highlighting the importance of upholding the sanctity of physical intimacy within the marital bond. The avoidance of sexual pressure or inappropriate advances signifies a deep respect for God's principles and a commitment to honoring His plan for a pure and honorable relationship. 1 Corinthians 6.18 underscores the need to flee from sexual immorality emphasizing the importance of honoring God's design for physical intimacy. 
Obedience to God's Word indeed plays a pivotal role in guiding the path of a relationship towards success and fulfillment. Number 4. The Overflow of Affection Alright, so picture this. You started noticing a surge of love and affection from your partner. It's like a warm, comforting embrace from God Himself. Now, don't let doubt creep in. When you feel that deep connection, understand that it's God signaling you to move forward. Sure, you might be tempted to wait for more signs, but here's the thing. God expects us to have faith. If He's allowing your partner to continuously shower you with love, and if you notice your own love continues to grow stronger, it's a clear sign. God doesn't deal in fleeting infatuations. He's all about that unwavering, enduring love. So when you see it, embrace it and trust that God is saying, yes, my child. Remember, if God didn't see a future together, that affection would fade away. So cherish the love that grows stronger, knowing it's God's way of guiding you. Number five, confirmation from trusted believers. Now, seeking advice is crucial. Proverbs 1.5 reminds us that a wise person listens and learns from others. So, when you consult trusted believers, spiritual leaders, or those devoted brethren in your life, it's like getting divine confirmation. These people have insights into relationships, and when they nod in agreement, it's a powerful affirmation from God. He uses wisdom from others to guide us. So pay attention to that godly counsel. It's a sign that God is giving you the green light. So in wrapping this up, remember these signs are God's way of guiding your spiritual and relational journey. Seek God's wisdom, pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance, and reaffirm your relationship with Him. This is very crucial if you want to be led by Him without struggling. As you follow these signs, you'll experience peace, stronger bonds, spiritual growth, mutual trust, and confirmation from fellow believers. When all these pieces fall into place, you can be confident that God is saying a resounding yes. Trust in Him, my dear friend. Even when the doors seem closed, God is leading you towards making the right choices in your relationship. I pray that the Lord God will bless you abundantly on this journey. And may you find and enjoy your relationship with the person He's prepared for you. Imagine the assurance that comes with knowing God's promises are not mere words, but living truths. This belief transforms your perspective on relationships. It's about the transition from past experiences, which might have been disheartening, to a future filled with joy and genuine connection. This shift isn't just hopeful thinking. It's a faith-filled certainty that the one God has for you will emerge, breaking through barriers and defying all odds to be with you. And when this person, molded and moved by God's command, enters your life, they're there to stay, not just as a passerby, but as a fulfilling presence. The connection you'll share with this person is rooted in authenticity. True love resonates with true emotions. It's a reflection of what's genuine and heartfelt. As Proverbs 27:19 says, as water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. This biblical wisdom speaks volumes about the importance of genuine emotions in nurturing a relationship. Now consider the value of solitude. In those quiet moments alone, you're not just passing time. You're engaging in a profound act of self-discovery and appreciation. God, in His wisdom, often uses these periods of solitude to prepare us for the relationships He has in store. It's in these moments of introspection and peace that you learn the valuable lesson of being comfortable in your own skin. This is not about loneliness. It's about finding strength and contentment in your own company. It echoes the words of Psalm 4610, Be still and know that I am God. The moment you find peace in solitude is the moment you're ready to share your life with someone else. It's when you no longer feel the pang of emptiness while enjoying a coffee alone or taking a solitary walk. This readiness is a clear indication that you're prepared for a relationship that adds to your life rather than filling a void. 
The journey to finding the one is not just about waiting for them to arrive. It's about growing, believing, and preparing yourself for the extraordinary love God has planned. When you embrace this journey with faith and self-love, you open your heart to a relationship that's not just fulfilling, but divinely ordained. Remember, the one God has prepared for you will pursue you, adore you, and align with the very essence of your being, creating a love that is as deep and enduring as the promises of God Himself. Now, think about the principle of sowing and reaping, beautifully encapsulated in Galatians 6-7. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. This principle applies to relationships as well. To attract someone who embodies the qualities you desire, you must first cultivate those qualities in yourself. It's not just about seeking someone with integrity, kindness, and a heart after God. It's about being that person. In the realm of Christian dating, there's a vital need for emotional maturity and spiritual growth. These aren't just buzzwords. They're foundational stones for any relationship that aspires to reflect Christ's love. Emotional stability allows you to navigate the complexities of a relationship with wisdom and grace. This stability doesn't just happen. It's cultivated through a deep relationship with Christ, through prayer and meditation, as highlighted in Philippians 4, 6 and 7. In these moments of quietude with God, you find the strength and resilience needed for a relationship that's not only fulfilling, but also glorifying to God. The journey to finding the One is also a journey of self-preparation. It's about being proactive in your personal and spiritual growth, ensuring that when you do meet that person, you're not just ready to be loved, you're ready to give love. Proverbs 31.30 reminds us, Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. This isn't about gender. It's about the principle of valuing inner qualities over superficial allure. It's these qualities that create a lasting bond. Remember, the one God has for you will recognize and value the divine work in your life. They will be drawn to your commitment to Christ, your emotional and spiritual maturity, and your genuine love. But more importantly, they will pursue and adore you. They will pursue and adore you even more because these are the qualities they too embody and cherish. The key to unlocking this divine connection lies in understanding your own value and worth in the eyes of God. When you recognize and cherish your own uniqueness, you radiate an inner light that attracts the one who is meant to adore and cherish you. This isn't about simply waiting for someone to find you. It's about actively participating in your own journey of self-discovery and spiritual growth. By nurturing your relationship with God, you cultivate an environment where love can bloom in its purest form. As you embark on this journey, remember that it's not about finding someone to complete you, but rather about finding someone who complements the beautiful individual God has already made you to be. In this process, it's essential to embrace the season of singleness, not as a time of lack, but as a precious period of preparation. It's a time to delve deep into your faith, to understand the true essence of love as described in 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, where love is patient, kind, and keeps no record of wrongs. Imagine a love that is not just a fleeting emotion, but a steadfast commitment akin to the unwavering love God has for us. This kind of love is patient, it doesn't rush, and it respects the divine timing of your life's story. The one God has prepared for you will recognize and honor this sacred timing. They will pursue you with a heart full of genuine affection, grounded in mutual respect and admiration. So, as you walk this path, keep your heart open and your faith strong. Trust that God is weaving a story that is uniquely yours, a story that will unfold in His perfect timing. Remember, the journey to finding true love is not just about the destination, but about growing and flourishing in your faith along the way. 
in every step of your journey. Keep your eyes fixed on God, for He is the ultimate author of love. He is preparing someone extraordinary for you, someone who will not only pursue you, but will treasure and adore you even more deeply than you could imagine. Your story of love is being written in the stars, and its chapters are filled with hope, faith, and divine guidance. Embrace this journey with an open heart and watch as the most beautiful love story of your life unfolds before you. Remember, your significant other, fashioned by God's own hands, is out there, destined to find you. This person, crafted perfectly in God's image, is not just a figment of imagination, but a reality waiting to unfold. The divine connection you will share with them goes beyond mere attraction. It is a holy union orchestrated by the Creator Himself. Consider the profound truth that we, as humans, are uniquely designed to collaborate with God in fulfilling His purposes. Unlike any other creation, we have the privilege and responsibility to work alongside God. This divine collaboration extends to our relationships as well. God is intricately involved in preparing someone just for you. This person, someone who aligns with your heart's desires and God's plan, is being shaped just as you are being prepared for them. The pursuit of this special someone is not a chase, but a journey marked by divine timing and guidance. The one meant for you will seek you out with a heart full of love, admiration, and respect. This pursuit is not just a worldly courtship. It is a spiritual journey guided by God's wisdom and timing. To recognize and welcome this divine partnership, it is essential to let go of past hurts and embrace healing. As 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Release the chains of past traumas and open your heart to the new blessings God has in store for you. Self-awareness and personal growth are also key. Before you can fully embrace the love that awaits, you must understand and love yourself as God does. This means shedding any remnants of your old self that hinder your spiritual and emotional growth. As you grow in your faith and understanding of God's love, you become more ready to receive and reciprocate the love that He has planned for you. A relationship founded on Christian principles is not just about companionship. It is about building a life together that glorifies God. It involves setting aside earthly desires and allowing God to reign supreme in your hearts. As Matthew 6.33 advises, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. By focusing on God, you align yourself with His plans, including His plan for your relationship. Healthy relationships also extend beyond romantic connections. They include friendships and family ties, all governed by the principles of love, respect, and boundaries, as outlined in the Bible. As you cultivate these relationships, you prepare yourself for a lifelong partnership that honors God. Have you ever found yourself deeply caring about someone, yet you're not in a relationship with them? It's a curious heart tug, isn't it? You might wonder, why has God stirred such feelings in me? Let's explore this intriguing question together. Picture this. You're walking through a beautiful garden filled with vibrant flowers and lush greenery. Each flower represents a person in your life. Among these, there's one that catches your eye more than others. It's not the biggest or the brightest, but there's something special about it that draws you in. This is akin to how we sometimes feel about a certain person, even if we're not romantically involved with them. Well, here's a perspective to consider. What if this deep care is a seed planted by God, not for immediate blossoming, but for nurturing growth over time? Sometimes the care we feel is not a direct sign of imminent romance, but rather a call to foster qualities like patience, understanding, and genuine affection. 
free from the immediate gratification of a relationship. Reflect on 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, where love is described as patient, kind, and not self-seeking. These words remind us that love in its truest form isn't always about immediate fulfillment, but often about the journey of growth and understanding. Now, consider the possibility that your feelings might be a lesson in discernment. It's essential to recognize that mutual affection is a cornerstone of any relationship, even if feelings aren't reciprocated. It's not a rejection, but a redirection. God's plans for us often include learning from each relationship dynamic we encounter, guiding us closer to where we need to be. Proverbs 19, 21 Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. This verse eloquently captures the essence of our journey. Our feelings, whether they lead to relationships or not, are part of a larger tapestry woven by God's purposeful design. So as you explore these feelings, remember, they're not just about the potential of a future relationship. They're about growth, learning, and understanding the depth and breadth of care and love under God's watchful eye. Whether this care blossoms into a relationship or evolves into a cherished lesson, it holds value and purpose in your life's journey. But why? Why has God allowed you to care so deeply? Consider this. Perhaps the intensity of your emotions is a divine signal, a nudge to reflect on the way you engage with your heart. It's not uncommon to surrender our hearts in the whirlwind of romance and connection. But in Proverbs 4.23, we're reminded of a crucial wisdom. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. This isn't a call to build impenetrable walls around your feelings. Rather, it's an invitation to love wisely and discerningly, to recognize the sacredness of your own heart and the love it holds. Loving someone isn't a flaw, and feeling deeply isn't a mistake. These are the things that make us profoundly human and reflect the image of a loving Creator. Yet in this divine reflection, we are called to steward our hearts with wisdom. To love someone isn't to lose yourself in them, but to see your care as a testament to your capacity to feel and empathize deeply. When you find your heart aching, perhaps it's a moment to pause and consider. Are you loving in a way that honors not just the other, but also yourself and your Creator? If you found that your heart has been mishandled or not cherished as it should be, this isn't the end of your story. It's a turning point. It's a moment to gather the scattered pieces of your heart and offer them back to the one who fashioned them. In this offering, you're not giving up on love. You're reclaiming it, ensuring that your future affections are grounded in wisdom and respect for yourself and for the other. As you steer these waters, remember that your capacity to care deeply is not a burden, but a gift. It's a part of your divine makeup a piece of your spiritual journey. Embrace it with wisdom, guard it with prayer, and walk forward with the confidence that your deep care is not a path to endless pain, but a step toward a more discerning, wise, and heartfelt love. Love in its purest form is a reflection of the divine. It's not just a fleeting emotion, but a deliberate choice to embrace both joy and pain. For even in moments of heartache, love carries a purpose far greater than our immediate understanding. To love is to partake in a sacred dance, mirroring the unconditional love that God extends to us all. But why pain, you might ask? Why would a loving God allow our hearts to ache? While the answer might not soothe the sting of hurt immediately, it's found in the grand tapestry of life, where every thread weaves together for a higher purpose. In the Christian faith, we believe that all things, even the most painful experiences, are ultimately meant to bring glory to God. This doesn't mean that God delights in our suffering, but that through our trials and tribulations, we grow closer to Him. Learn to rely on His strength and become a testament to His enduring love and grace. Now, understanding this concept might not always bring immediate comfort. Knowing that your pain serves a higher purpose doesn't always dry the tears in the moments of distress. 
And that's perfectly okay. It's human to feel, to grieve, and to question. However, amidst the whirlwind of emotions, we're invited to dive deeper into the heart of God, to understand His nature, and to reflect on what it truly means to glorify Him. To glorify God is to bear His image, to reflect His attributes of love, mercy, forgiveness, and resilience. It's about embodying the essence of Christ, who loved unconditionally and sacrificially. As we strive to live out His love, we naturally extend it to others, even to those who might not return it. In many ways, this is the ultimate act of divine love, loving without expectation, just as God loves us. In your journey of love and care for another, remember that you're not just seeking human companionship, but are also called to reflect the love of God. This path isn't easy. It's strewn with uncertainties and sometimes unreciprocated feelings. Yet if you persevere in love, in time you might just find the person who mirrors the love and commitment you're willing to give, reflecting the beautiful relationship between Christ and the church. So as you ponder why God's allowed you to care so deeply for someone, consider it an invitation to explore the depths of divine love. Let this experience draw you closer to understanding God's heart and purpose for your life. Embrace the journey with all its highs and lows as the path to spiritual growth and deeper connection with the one who loves you most profoundly. Remember, your story is still being written. And each chapter, even those filled with tears and questions, contributes to the greater narrative of your life. A life that, when surrendered to God, unfolds in ways more beautiful and intricate than you could ever imagine. The Creator, in His infinite wisdom, has orchestrated your path to intersect with another's for reasons beyond our initial comprehension. It's not about changing or converting someone to our way of thinking or belief, nor is it about waiting for a fairy tale ending with someone who doesn't share your deepest convictions. Instead, it's about being a beacon of light, love, and truth in someone's life, regardless of the outcome. Consider the narrative of Ruth and Naomi, a testament to God's plan working through relationships. Ruth, a Moabite, and Naomi, an Israelite, were from different worlds. Yet Ruth's unwavering devotion to Naomi was a part of a larger design. Through their bond, Ruth became an ancestor of Jesus, a testament to how God can use our relationships in profound and unexpected ways. Our connections, especially those that tug heartstrings, are not just about romantic fulfillment. They're about reflecting the love and grace that we've received. When you find yourself deeply caring for someone, it could be an opportunity to show kindness, patience, and understanding. This isn't advocating for staying in relationships that lead you away from your faith or core values. It's about recognizing that sometimes our paths cross with others for a season of mutual growth, support, and enlightenment. Remember, not all relationships are meant to last a lifetime. Some are indeed seasonal, serving a specific purpose before the leaves turn and the winds change direction. But the impact of these relationships can last forever, shaping us into more compassionate, understanding individuals. Navigating these waters requires wisdom and discernment. It's about seeing people not just for who they are now, but for who they could be, without the expectation that they'll change according to our desires. It's about loving unconditionally, serving without an agenda, and trusting that God's plan is at work even when the path seems obscured. As you ponder the reasons behind your deep care for someone, consider this. Perhaps it's not just about the role you'll play in their story, but the transformation that'll occur within your own heart. Embrace this journey with open arms and an open heart, knowing that each step is guided by a higher purpose. Stay blessed, stay hopeful, and may your path be illuminated with love and purpose. Don't forget to engage with this message. Like, subscribe, and share your thoughts.
Is there anything wrong with being kind as a Christian man? What if I told you that being kind can have consequences? What if I told you that in life, being kind might lead to unexpected trouble? As a man, it's important to understand that being kind shouldn't be mistaken for weakness or a lack of principles. Some people believe that only weak individuals are kind, but that's not true. There are many kind people who are also strong and principled. You might wonder, what kind men often face difficulties, especially when it comes to marital and social relationships? Does the Bible really encourage people to be kind? We'll explore this question and see what God expects from us as Christian men based on the Bible. In this video, I'll discuss God's perspective on kindness for Christians and what God wants us to do in a world where kindness is seen as a sign of weakness and sometimes of foolishness. Let's get started. To start, it's important to understand that when we say you should not be overly nice, we don't mean you should be hostile to everyone around you. No, as followers of Christ, we should have welcoming hearts and always be able to connect with others. We should be welcoming in our community, our workplace, church, or wherever we are. It's okay to be kind even when others misunderstand our intentions and even treat us badly. As children of God, we are expected to show kindness to everyone, regardless of our personal feelings towards them. This reflects the fruit of the Spirit working within us. Galatians 5.22-23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. You'll notice that the scripture doesn't specifically mention being nice as a fruit of the Spirit. Simply being nice as a man can make you appear as though you lack principles or direction. Hence, we need to be better than nice, to be something different. Let's take a look at the parable of the unforgiving servant found in Matthew 18. In this parable, a servant owed a huge sum of money to the king, a debt he couldn't possibly repay. The king decided to sell the servant his family, and all his belongings to recover the debt. However, the servant pleaded with the king for patience and mercy. Touched by compassion, the king forgave the entire debt, relieving the servant of his burden. Shortly after being forgiven, the servant came across another servant who owed him a much smaller amount. Despite receiving the king's forgiveness, the servant acted harshly towards his fellow servant, demanding immediate payment. When the debtor asked for mercy and patience, the forgiven servant refused, throwing him into prison without any compassion. When the king learned of this unkind and unsympathetic behavior, he was furious and called for the forgiven servant. The king reminded him of the great mercy he had been shown and questioned why he couldn't show the same grace to his fellow servant. Ultimately, the king withdrew his forgiveness reinstated the servant's original debt and handed him over to be punished until the debt was fully repaid. In a situation like this, it's not just about being nice. Despite the initial kindness of the king towards his servant, he wasn't aware of the servant's true intentions. This is why it's crucial to listen to the Holy Spirit's voice, even when attempting to be kind to those around us. The Bible instructs us to be hospitable, polite, friendly, and kind but not necessarily nice. A man who walks with God shouldn't just be nice, but should also have a sense of responsibility. Joshua 1.9 states, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. As a man, it's important to demonstrate strength and bravery so that those you are called to protect feel secure in your presence. Nice people may struggle to confront the difficult situations that come their way, especially when dealing with others. Now, let's look at some factors you need to consider as a man before choosing to be nice. First, let's talk about understanding and setting limits. It's important to know your boundaries and not let others take advantage of you. The Bible tells us to be kind and caring, but it also teaches us to stand up for ourselves when we need to. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14 says, Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, 
Be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. It's great to be nice, but it's also important to be aware of the difference between being nice and being kind. As a Christian man, you should be both kind and assertive. Being too nice can lead to making compromises that might have long-term negative effects on your life. Sometimes being overly nice can lead to compromising your own beliefs. If you want healthy relationships, it's vital to listen to God's guidance about being nice. There are some people who you shouldn't be overly nice to because it might lead you to go against your own boundaries and beliefs. This is a very crucial factor to keep in mind. Ephesians 5.33 says that husbands should love their wives as they love themselves, and wives should respect their husbands. The Bible encourages husbands to love and be kind to their wives without limits. However, this doesn't apply to all types of relationships. In other relationships, there may be boundaries and restrictions to maintain discipline and effectiveness. For example, in the relationship between a father and his child, a father can't always be 100% nice. It doesn't mean he doesn't love the child, but setting boundaries and discipline helps raise a responsible child for the future. Secondly, let's talk about leadership and responsibilities. The Bible teaches that all men are leaders. Leadership should be uncompromising and an integral part of a man's identity. God commands men to rule and subdue the earth. You can be kind but also firm, and there are different levels of being nice. Kindness and being nice are not the same. A true leader needs to distinguish between the two for a successful leadership journey. Leadership applies to various aspects in life. It can be seen at work, in sports teams, in the church, in the community, and within the family. God expects unique and kind leadership at all these levels, rather than just being a nice leader. Because being a nice leader can lead to compromise. Imagine if Gideon had been overly nice in selecting his army. He wouldn't have been able to conquer Israel's enemies with his 300 men. To be a great leader, you must be firm and kind and not just nice. Does this mean it's wrong to be nice? No, that's not what I'm saying here. However, there must be limits to being nice so that it doesn't create more problems than it solves. You should show your limits and recognize when you're being excessively nice. Sometimes, being overly nice can lead to a loss of self-respect when you find yourself doing things you shouldn't just to be nice, so be mindful of that. Take your stand where you need to take your stand. Say no when you need to, and make sure that everything you do, regardless of how those around you may feel about you or it must come from a place of love and the fear of God, it won't be easy, but you will have no regrets. Now let's talk about courage. Did you know that as a man, lacking courage will make it difficult for others to recognize and respect you? A man who walks with God is seen as a formidable force by his adversaries. His partner, family, and followers feel safe because they know their leader can defend and defeat the enemy when necessary. King David advised his son Solomon to be strong, courageous, kind, and compassionate while being a brave and resilient king who couldn't be easily swayed by the enemy. God expects all men to show strength, courage, and dominion while still being kind to others. As Christians, it's important to uphold the truth. When niceness is emphasized more than truth, it can create opportunities for compromise against God's will. For example, Samson's excessive niceness to Delilah led to his downfall. Dear Christian, the world might praise you for being overly nice, but it could mean that you're not following God's will anymore. Remember, the saints in the Bible were hated and persecuted because they stood firm in doing God's will, not because they did anything wrong. When you're genuinely following God's will and not just being nice, you may face opposition or persecution, just like the apostles were persecuted and later martyred. The book of John mentions that if the world hates you, it's because you don't belong to the world, but you've been chosen out of it. Jesus warned that if they persecuted him, they will persecute his followers too. If you never face any opposition, you should question whether you're truly living as a Christian. A person who is only nice will never have issues with the ways of the world. In conclusion, 
Jesus is the perfect example of showing kindness while also displaying righteous anger in unfair situations. The book of Matthew describes how Jesus drove out those who were misusing the temple, showing that kindness can coexist with strength and standing up for what's right. Just like Jesus, the Bible encourages all men to embrace their God-given strength, exercise discernment, and take up their leadership responsibilities. By doing so, you can stand strong. So be courageous, my friend. You're not weak. You are strong. You've got this.